All right, and welcome back to week two of our four week seven series and in introduction to the game of the short format of our beautiful game rugby. Um, we're lucky to have Christy Kirshi, US international sevens player, uh, with us again. And uh, this week we're going to be exploring the key skills of the game and why the ability to perform their skills under pressure is an essential element of success in the game of sevens. And we'll talk about kind of Christy's story and learning the skills and developing the skills and sort of relay those experiences and talk about how you guys can do the same thing and, and try to replicate kind of Christy's journey um, that she's undertaken. So Christy, thank you very much for being on. It's, it's good to be here again for week two. Yeah, definitely excited. Nice. I'm, I'm fired up. We Obviously, I've got my draft background here. We had the collegiate draft last night, so I'm still buzzing after that and I'm ripping my Vermont flannel here so I know I'm pretty jealous of that final that was the first thing I noticed when we got on the call it's a pretty nice one yeah I, that that kit bundle of kit must be just around the corner Christy I would imagine oh, I, hope so. <laughs> I hope so too week three let's pray we see Christy and Free Jack's kit speaking of Free Jack's kit there you are there yeah I look good there so you know I need the kit you know yeah Ollie take notes please and and get yes. that sorted so core skills of the game, Christy, it's going to be a shorter installment this week. And, um, you know, we're, last week we kind of focused on the broad overview, what exactly is the game, what components go into the game. And we spoke about core skills being such a vital component. And I think that's why we've gone on to focus on that for this week. Yeah, definitely. So um, just kind of looking at this graphic, you know, we kind of have it built in a pyramid. And the, the way I kind of looked at this was, you know, your bottom, the bottom few are kind of the, the most basic, but also the most necessary skills. And as you kind of go up this ladder, they kind of are more specialized skills in the game. Um, so my plan is to kind of, you know, talk through them from bottom up, just, you know, from catch pass all the way through some of the more specialty skills that you'll see um, as you get into kind of higher levels of the game um, and higher level players. Uh, yeah, so just kind of start catch pass. Um, it's a pretty broad category, but it actually encompasses a lot of um, rugby sevens and a lot of elements that are absolutely necessary in sevens. Um, so we talked about this a little bit last week, just, you know, because rugby sevens is, you know, it's a bigger field. Um, less people it's somewhat it's so dynamic and it's such a constant m movement um game that every single person on the field has to have the core catch pass abilities whether that's you know um passing from the base or just you know transfer passing like those are really necessary skills for absolutely everyone to do and you have to be able to do them at pace um because the game is so fast um so like within this you know it's it's not just about, you know, purely being able to catch the ball and get rid of it, but it's actually being able to catch the ball in a um, productive manner. Um, and then also make sure that you're getting the pass off in the most productive manner possible so that you're setting up the next person in line to be able to, um, you know, attack space. Um, this has actually been, for me, one of the things that I've worked on the most constantly. Um, you know, it was something that obviously you learn kind of when you first start playing rugby is how to catch a ball, how to pass a ball. Um, but it's something that you can constantly improve on. Um, and so for me, a big part of this has been, you know, um, improving the speed of, you know, from the second I get the ball to getting rid of it. Um, for my first few, you know, rounds on the series, um, my biggest threat was definitely my ability to run. So making sure that I'm a more dynamic player in being able to actually be a threat to get rid of the ball as well um, just is, has been something that I've been kind of working on constantly, just making sure that, you know, I can catch the ball in a way that it's going to, it's, I'm ready to get rid of it right away and I'm not fumbling around with it, not taking all that extra time um, and actually just, and then, and then also with the past, just improving the accuracy of it is just something you can always be working on. So that's kind of like the most fundamental you know, core skill of rugby sevens is that ability to catch pass and catch pass well. Um, That's a great point, Christy, that. isn't it? That that speed of transfer across the body is, is so crucial. And, and I know one thing I noticed when watching the circuit is some of the weaker teams, they don't do as good of a job, like you say, and it's not a, just about shifting the ball. If you're moving laterally or moving laterally, you're just taking away your own space. Whereas the better teams, 
USA being one of them, stay relatively square, attack the line, all options are on and shift it in a far better manner, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And something we talk about a lot is, you know, maintaining um, that space straight up and down the pitch, um, not drifting into other people's kind of attacking lanes as you're moving the ball, and also just making sure that catching is not something that's static. It should be something that you're moving on to the ball as it's coming to you. Um, and just that slight, whether it's a micro movement or whether it's an exagger exaggerated movement, um, is going to hold that defender for just that extra second. And that extra second means that you're going to be putting away the next person um, through a gap. So just that kind of dynamic nature of being able to kind of, this kind of goes into the next one, but like manipulate that space a little bit with that catch pass and just be able to do that well um, is just massively important. And also with sevens, um, you know, you have to be able to pass the ball over longer distances, which I think is also something that, you know, as you get more comfortable on the ball, you're able to do um, in a better way. So just just that is kind of just the, the baseline almost of rugby in general, but especially sevens. I like what you did there. And, and Christy, I know for myself, um, you know, it's, it's very different passing either direction. Did you find and do you still find, you know, you're more comfortable passing the ball one way? Is that something that you work on? And respect your catch pass oh definitely I, I mean I'm definitely more comfortable off my right hand I think um we kind of live in a right hand dominated society so I think a lot of people are um but yeah just working on that left hand and trying to get that comfort in you know being able to pass as accurately and as well off my left hand as I am off my right um also a big thing for me has been um improving my pass from the base just that like that halfback pass um yeah. It's something you can kind of get away with for a little while, um, uh, like, you know, as you're like moving up through the levels, but really being able to get in and out quickly and clear that ball out of there is huge and something I've been working on a lot and a lot, something I've been coached on a lot in the last year is just that comfort of being able to, to scrum half pass left and right handed comfortably. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, that goes along with obviously the transfer is important, but also just everyone has to be able to do that halfback pass as well. Um, and it's definitely more difficult for me off my left hand than my right. Nice. And I loved your segue there into manipulation of space. If I'm just to quickly yeah. relate that to 15s catch pass, you, you often, there, there is a place in 15s for big front rowers who aren't as well um, skilled and, and, and don't really put catch and pass very often and just catch and carry and get over the game line. But like you said, everyone's got to have the skill set, don't they? Yes, I think so. Uh, yeah, so next up is uh, just like evasion and manipulation of space. Um, you know, uh, be, with rugby sevens being the, um, with so many less people on the field than 15s, there's a lot more space. So um, I often say that the, the team that can man manipulate the space better is the team that's going to uh, be more successful. So when I think kind of about this, you know, as a category, I think about, well, first, the first thing you have to do is be able to identify space. And that's, uh, that's a really important part of sevens um, is just um, every player on the field being able to identify what is the best space to attack, whether that means you guys have like your team has an overlap or um, so like whether it's a 2v1, a 3v2, um, those types of overlaps, or whether you think that you can beat your defender one-on-one, -on -one, um, just being able to identify what that space is and where the best place on the field is to attack. Um, I'd say that's step one of this kind of manipulation of space. But then step two is knowing that, okay, once you've identified what the space is, it's what, what to do with it and how to attack it in um, the best way. Um, and so when you really break it down, it's all about being defenders, whether that's, whether you're doing it individually, whether that's, you know, we talked about this a little bit last week, but um, as like a super skill, whether that's, you know, your ability to beat somebody one-on-one -on -one with like your pace or your ability to, your agility and your ability to change direction quickly or, um, uh, yeah, your ability to just kind of or also whether that's you are very powerful, you're great at breaking tackles, you can throw a big strong fend, like those are kind of um, individual like one-on-one -on -one skills. But the other part of this is utilizing your teammates and that run past decision-making that you have to be able to make um, on the field at all times. Um, so this is something that we practice really often in small spaces is, you know, 
I, we have a 3v2 overload. How are we going to get past the, that defense? And how are we going to get past them um, without having to take contact? And so just, I think a big part of this is, yeah, understanding how to manipulate the space in front of you in order to, you know, score tries. Um, yeah, so I think when you think about like the USA team, you know, we're, we're a group of kind of big girls. Um, and so we're not afraid of taking contact. Um, but that is, but if you can manipulate the space and you can beat people without having to take contact, it's just, it's less tiring, first of all. Um, it means you're going to be able to score more. And then it makes your physicality just an, an extra super strength on top of the ability to just win the space. Um, so yeah, so I'd say that's kind of the next step of rugby skills as we move in, move up in this um, Absolutely, no, that's very well explained, Christy. And, and yeah, I mean, you probably see that too, don't you? And the the better teams, they they don't go into contact unless they have to, and and yeah. they sort of leave the yeah the the showy stuff for when they have to use it, and and it's all wonderful. But if you can avoid that and just wear that team down and manipulate that space, then you're going to exploit that and score points through that way, which you're probably seeing USA do more and more. Yeah, it's definitely something that uh, we work on kind of constantly is just being able to read and manipulate space. But I mean, if you look at teams like Australia or New Zealand, like they're really good at not taking contact, like you said, unless they really have to. They're really good at manipulating defenders and, um, you know, whether that's, you know, running pin and passes where, you know, you're, you're pinning one defender so you can put somebody else away or just that ability to kind of keep the ball alive and keep the ball moving so you're you're making the defender shift left and right and cover you across the whole field that's going to open up space and then you're going to score easier tries than just you know trying to barrel through everyone um yeah so that's something we see on the series a lot nice and i can only imagine the amount of film that you guys watch and and talk about trying to identify and manipulate space and is there an element of scouting at your level christy that goes into uh watching other teams and how they defend their system Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we kind of do the, uh, the SWOT analysis, you know, the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, um, and trends of teams. You know, we kind of look at um, what basically for every team that's going to be in our pool, we do it. And then as we figure out what team we're going to play next, you know, we kind of break down, like, how are we going to be able to play them best? How can we best exploit um, what their weaknesses are? Um, and what do we need to do to be successful against them? But yeah, so we're always scouting. Nice. And then I guess that sort of leads into quite nicely into the next one and into the contact area on both sides of the ball, open field tackling and the contact area on attack and ball security. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I guess the opposite side of manipulation of space is, you know, defensively, you want to take away that space as much as possible. You want to, um, really focus on uh, limiting the options that the attack has. Um, so we kind of talk about this as um, what we call tracking. Um, and it's a really important skill in rugby in general, but especially at sevens when, you know, you might find yourself in a situation where, you know, you have a one-on-one -on -one and you, you're, the attacker has 20 meters of space. Um, and so that's a lot of ground for you to cover. Um, so you really have to understand how you can best take away space and limit their options at the same time so that really you are in control of the situation and they have less options to choose from. So um, something we talk about a lot with this is just, you know, as the ball is being passed, making sure you're coming up so that you're limiting the amount of time that they're going to have to make that decision. And then also just making sure you're kind of shutting off one of their um, one of the directions they're able to go. Um, so just kind of, you know, we usually try to force them to the sideline. So just kind of hurting them in that way to ensure that, you know, they're going to go that way. So then I can figure out, okay, you're going to, you're going to go to my left. So then I can get ready to make that hit. Um, and just that ability to kind of really limit their options. Um, is just the other, so it's just another version, I guess, of manipulating space, but really just trying to, to um, be comfortable in those situations where you have to defend over a lot of space. Um, yeah. And is it, is it containment to a point, Christy? Like, are you trying to be patient and contain them until an opportunity arises to potentially attack a breakdown and turn the ball over or 
from the get-go, are you trying to win position back on defense? Or does it depend? I think it definitely depends. I mean, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're really sure that it's your hit and you're going to be able to make that hit, um, we kind of think, okay, if you're going to get ball and all, then go for it. But if you're in a situation, you know, where you're defending a 2v1, you know, you can't just go all out and sell out on the first hit because then they're just going to send the ball wide and they're probably going to score. So that that kind of situation is a little bit more containment and just kind of trying to buy time before you can have other teammates come and help you. Um, yeah. Nice. That's very well explained. And then on the other side of the ball, I guess, is if you uh, left with no option and do have to enter the contact area, what? tell me about looking after the ball and ball security. How important is that? What, are you, what do you guys talk about in respect to ball security? Well, yeah. So obviously ball security is really important. I mean, the, the longer you can hang on to the ball, the less, the less time you have to defend, which is much more exhausting than playing attack. Um, and also, you know, the longer you hang on to the ball, the more you are to score and the more you're kind of suffocating the other team of the ability to score. So all good things. So ball secure, security is absolutely massive. Um, especially in the contact area. So um, a big difference between 15s and 7s, um, this kind of leads into breakdown skill, is the number of people that are committed to um, breakdowns or ruck situations. So in 15s, you know, you might have three or four guys, you know, headed, bring, like flying in to clear people out of this ruck, whereas in 7s, really, you're only going to have one person over the ruck and one person responsible for then clearing the ball out. So... Um, that work on the ground is so much more more important, I think, because um, it's only you and your one rucker who are responsible for getting the ball out cleanly. So we talk a lot about, you know, being active when you're on the ground, you know, making sure you're not just falling and placing the ball, but make sure you're really actually taking steps on the ground to move the ball into the best position possible. Um, so that it makes it easier on everyone else involved in that situation and you can get the ball out quickly because you don't want slow rucks and sevens because you don't really want to slow the game down. Um, so that kind of goes with that's and then that kind of goes with breakdown skill just you know as the supporting player you know instead of clearing over a ruck you really want to be able to clear the ruck and then hold that position and you want to be able to as that one person who's rucking, you really want to be make sure you can really hold that space and hold that space strongly so that the ball can get out cleanly, even if you're taking hits. Um, so I think those two kind of are two sides of the same coin. Go hand in hand, yeah. And and when you say when you're talking about sealing that breakdown, yeah. what are and what are you allowed to do? What are you encouraged to do in that position in order to try to retain? Because you do see the odd the odd time on on the circuit, you see you know, the defensive team trying to counter rock and try to blow that person up and they're sort of, are they holding onto the jersey on the player on the ground and sort of trying to fight for all life to stay yes. attached to that player? Yeah, so you, uh, you're you definitely kind of, la yeah, you're, you're latching on to that person on the ground. You can't go hands on the ground unless you've made contact with somebody. So you can't just go straight over and seal, put your hands on the ground on the other side of the player and just kind of hold that. So you either have, you can, you can, your hands can hit the ground if you've cleared somebody away, but then you have to come back to that position where your hands are on top of the person on the ground. Nice. Yeah. It's something that in the last year, they've really enforced a lot more than they had in the past. So it's something that you'll see kind of blown up a, a lot on the series right now um, or within the, the last year. So it's definitely something they're trying to um, limit. Nice. And, and I guess that kind of leads Christy into – you mentioned you don't want slow ball and, and that's why often you'll see from my understanding at least a lot more offloading potentially particularly from the ground you'll see girls and guys hit the ground and they'll look for options to pop the ball up ASAP um, talk us through that side of the game a little bit and the offloading side of the game as well yeah well I mean I think um Something I think about a lot when I think about offloading is this other side of ball security. It's like, okay, if you're going to be able to get the ball off cleanly and offload it to somebody to a great support, do it. But if not, just secure the ball. Um, but offloading is definitely something that um, you see a lot in sevens. You, you see it a lot in 15s too, um, obviously, but you see a lot less off the ground, I would say, um, in 
uh, 15s than you do in sevens. But it's just all, all of it is, is keeping that speed of play. Um, especially if, you know, if you've gone into a contact situation, you've taken out a defender. So then that means there's one less defender um, on their feet, which means you now have an, a, an attacking overload. So getting that ball away quickly um, through something like an offload just gives an advantage to the rest of your team and means that there's space that it that can be exploited. Um, so that's kind of how I think about offloading as a core skill. Nice. And I'm, I'm sure there are times where offloads are thrown and, and the coach is going, oh my goodness. So I'm sure that's in the back of your mind when you are thinking about that offload or not. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I think we have all been guilty of um, probably more than once, you know. Um, you know, you're going to ground and you think you have the great opportunity to get the offload and you just, you know, fall the wrong way or just throw it a little bit too hard and it just ends up kind of in a disastrous situation. Um, but I, it's something, you know, that we we have been working on. Um, it's something I think it, it comes with being comfortable on that ball and um, it's a skill that you definitely grow with as you become, you know, more aware of space and the people around you and where your supporting attackers are and all that kind of stuff. So kind of something that I think you grow into a little bit, just that, that comfort with offloading. Um, but I think it's a really important um, skill to have if you want to attack fast. And um, it's definitely easier to attack when you've already taken out defenders. So. Nice. Yeah. And which nations traditionally or, or in your experiences have been the best offloading teams that you've played against? And is that something you kind of scout as well? You, you kind of look at certain players and, and you know that they're, they, off, they often do offload or do look to offload more often than other players and teams? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think, you know, we scout individual players, but also like a lot of teams in general. I mean, as we said earlier, you know, Australia and New Zealand are really good at keeping that ball alive and not really taking contact. And if they do take contact, also getting rid of the ball. Also, um, Fiji is really well known for just their offload game. And they always have people who are ready to catch the offloads and are always there in support. So um, it obviously changes how you defend these teams, knowing that they're going to offload because sometimes it's not always the best to make that tackle. Or if you do make a tackle, you have to make sure you're up on your feet really quickly because you might have to make the next hit right after it. So just um, that, that repeated contact efforts, which we talked about last week, but um, just, yeah, it changes how you defend. And there are teams that definitely are, are better at it than others. I don't, I don't know that we're scouted as a strong offload team. I think we're a team that, you know, we have some players who are really great at it, but as an overall team, it's not really our, um, it hasn't really become our style yet. Um, but yeah, like the likes of Fiji, they're always throwing offloads and just always ready for it. And um, definitely changes how you have to prepare for those teams. Yeah, nice. You were talking about tying the ball up, Christy, and, and I'm sure that against those teams and players, you want to make sure you do tie the ball up if you are going to make that tackle and, and make right. it no um, chance. Yes. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's it's definitely a little bit harder against those teams because they're always so ready to get rid of it. So you might think you have the ball and all hit and you don't even realize it till you get back up that the ball is gone. Yeah, that it's gone out so that way easy. or around the back or something. Yeah, that becomes a little frustrating, but um, yeah. Nice. And, and I guess you, you've done a phenomenal job there of sort of outlaying the game and the, the skills, the core skills that, that go into it. And then those are sort of the skills everyone must have on the team. And, and tell us a little bit about that very top layer of the pyramid there. Yeah, so this um, this top layer is kind of, uh, I guess, I would say the, the super skill layer. Um, so obviously, so, you know, whatever your super strength is or whatever makes you, you know, your best version of a rugby player, um, that's where kind of these skills rest. And those are the skills that I feel like um, you cultivate, but also, um, you know, sometimes they're just kind of natural abilities that you get to exploit. Um, but, you know, with kicking, that's something you have to learn. And the drop kick in sevens is hugely important. And, you know, we talked about it last week a little bit, but, you know, there's no tees. You're not kicking off any tees in sevens. So, you know, all your conversions are drop kicks. And your kickoffs are drop kicks, which is a huge point of a huge possession game in sevens, um, that kickoff. And so when you have kickers who are able to, you know, kick – those drop kicks with precision you then then your jumpers who are also which is also a specialty position 
are more likely to be able to maintain possession and then you're just it's going back to being able to suffocate the other team with the ball. You have the ball the whole time and you are winning all the kickoffs. You know, it's, it's a pretty good recipe for winning games. Um, and I think just, just kind of similarly for set pieces and restarts, just um, those are just things that you, be, you can become your super skills as you work on them and, and get really good at certain things. Nice. And, and you look at the, the men's national team and they're definitely known for being a, a team to watch out for, like guys like Ben Pinkelman. And um, yeah. I'm sure you can attest to some of those guys, a, a real nuisance around the restart. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. They're really good at maintaining possession. They also have, you know, some of the best kickers in the world. So that always helps in that, um, in that kickoff zone. Um, it's something that we work on every week and we have really incredible kickers, you know, the likes of Olev Kelter and Nicole Heverland. Um, they're really precision kickers, which just makes means our jumpers are that much more likely to win the ball, which means we're that much more likely to um, get to play more offense than defense, which, as I mentioned earlier, it is a lot easier to play attack than it is to play defense. So it's always exciting when we win that ball back, especially just momentum-wise, it's huge for yeah, the game. Absolutely. No, I, I love the way that you talk about that. And, you know, it's a position dominant game, isn't it? The team that dominates position rather is more than likely going to be the one that comes out on top. What do you yeah, sort of, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome, man. What a great overview of the core skills of the game. And I guess now we'll get into kind of how you go about learning and developing those and your experiences down in Trula Vista, where you're based for how often, how many months of the year typically are you based down in Trula? Uh, well, so I live there full time. Uh, the only reason I'm home now is just because of everything that's happened with um, all this Corona stuff. But yeah, we're all there full time. So it's it's our full time jobs. It's where we live full time. So nice. So what a, what a great training environment that must be. And we'll kind of touch on that now with the learning continuum and, and skill acquisition. So all this means and we, we kind of you, you see this in every in every team. Um, from the grassroots all the way up, but the closed skills are essentially skills done with no environmental influences. There's no, there's no real wind. There's no real pressure in your face. It's just you and the skill. It might be a couple of cones and a teammate. Whereas open skills, we've got an image of you receiving a, an offload pass contact there, uh, and about to gas the Kiwis down the right hand flank. Um, but that's essentially how we learn skills, isn't that? And I'm sure you can probably relate back to some of the core skills we talked about in your journey from going from really basic closed skills all the way to doing it on the on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so something that I mentioned that has been big for me is just that, that catch-pass skill um, and just the constant kind of improvement of that catch-pass skill. So that's something that especially right now um, we I've worked on a lot in like this closed skill zone where, you know, it's just uh, me, the ball and the net. And I'm just working on, you know, kind of improving that precision um, and improve, improving my accuracy in that. And also same with the transfer, you know, I spent a lot of time with somebody, you know, often actually my dad popping a ball to me and just working on that speed of transfer and the smoothness of that transfer and those are all kind of close, close skill scenarios where, you know, I'm just working on increasing my comfort with it so that then when I do have to do it in a more pressurized situation, like at practice or in some of like the more high speed drills we're doing, I just have a higher level of base comfort um, and just kind of have that background knowing that I, I, I can do it. And, you know, that confidence always helps a little bit too. Um, so that's kind of, I think for catch pass, at least that's, you know, you can always work on the closed skills, but improving those closed skills is only going to make you better when you are in that open skill zone. That's great. I, they, I think you did right there and saying if, if you're not comfortable just standing there and passing off your left hand, it feels awkward. You right. know, it's not going to feel much better when you're out there doing it. So uh, I guess that, that, that goes to, oh, it goes to show that the um, repetition is key um, in learning those skills. And we're lucky enough at flight performance and fitness where you, spent a lot of time training to have that net there and that may have been the net you were referring to when you were talking about learning to pass and refining your pass. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. I was there when Jared um, first built that net. Um, and it was a really exciting moment because we were like, oh, now we have a target to pass to and we don't need, like, you don't even need somebody else to be there with you. You just get to pass into the net, um, you know, which is something that everyone always can work on, like, as a very core rugby skill, like, your pass is something that, like, you can't really get anywhere if you can't pass the ball. So I think um, that's just one of those things that can always be worked on. Um, and something I've definitely worked a lot on in this, you know, unexpected off season that we now have. Yeah, awesome. And and Christy, tell me a little bit about uh, the open field tackle and how new to you was that skill coming from soccer to now you've got to wrap a person up and and wrestle them to the ground at full at full noise. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, so this is actually kind of the lucky part of my background was um, I played Pop Warner football when I was a little kid, so um, American football. Um, so I learned how to make like a proper form tackle when I was like seven years old, um, which I think is something that um, has blessed me in more ways than I ever would have known. Um, because it was something that when I got to rugby, it was like, oh, okay, like I've, I've learned how to do this. I learned how to do this when I was a little kid. Obviously, it's different in football when you have pads and everything protecting you. Um, and it's also different when you're eight because no one's moving that fast. But um, I just had that basic level of kind of comfort in the contact zone. Um, and so ever since, it's whenever people ask me for like, oh, what is your biggest piece of advice for people who you know, want to rise up in rugby, I'm like, learn to love the physicality and learn to love the contact zone because it's a really clear, it, it's really clear and it really defines people on the field, whether they're, you know, whether they do love that contact, whether they're willing to go and make that hit, whether they're willing to, to take contact. And so I think I got really lucky in that sense that, um, you know, I was at least comfortable in the close contact but in terms of, um, you know, open field tackling, something that I've been working a lot on is that tracking ability. And that, as I talked about earlier, just that ability to kind of close on space, force people one way. Um, and so I think that's been a bigger part of my learning as opposed to, you know, actually like, you know, tackle in the wrap. Um, I got kind of lucky in that aspect. Nice. I've uh, seen the videos of you playing football as yes. a seven-year-old or... Uh, yeah, I think I'm seven or eight in the video. I seven or eight in the video, giving a big fend and, yeah. and a big see you later. So, no, that's awesome. We might be able to get that up there, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, I t I just that just triggered my uh, my thoughts there, Christy. How many tackles on average do you make in a sevens game? Do you know? Oh, it really depends on the game. Yeah. Um, and it depends on the player. Um you know, sometimes I'll come out with some sevens game making maybe two or three tackles, and then sometimes I'll come out maybe t making seven or eight. So it really just depends on, um, you know, what situations you kind of get yourself caught in during the game. Um, yeah, so I, and at the end of a tournament, you know, after a six-game tournament, you know, sometimes you might only have 10 total tackles, yeah. or sometimes you might have, like, closer to 50. So it really just – it can it can really vary player to player and game to game, but, um, yeah. Awesome. Nice. Well, that, no, that's an awesome kind of, uh, and I, I guess everyone's sort of further along certain skills. Like if I think of a guy like Madison Hughes, he's probably a lot further along the passing and kicking than some of the other guys, but in terms of evasion, may not be as high as the likes of, you know, your Carlin Isles is, and, and whatnot. So I'm sure that, you know, you see fluctuations and that's what the coach's job to pick the, the, guy, the guys and girls that have different skills and, and work out where to put them. Yeah, definitely. And I, I will say for Madison, it's pretty hard to, you know, be at the same levels of evasion as uh, Carlin. But uh, <laughs> in general, um, yeah, I mean, I think all about it is, you know, everyone has their super strengths and everyone has um, the things that they're good at. And it's just learning how to combine those. And as a teammate, learning how to, you know, allow the person next to me to use their super strength in the best way possible for the team. And so I think that's just something that, you know, it's kind of true of all sports, but it's especially true in rugby is just, you know, everyone has their super strengths and it's all about maximizing those strengths on the field as a team. Love that. Awesome. Christy, thanks so much for such a comprehensive overview into the core skills and kind of your, your experiences and shaping this story through your experiences. It's been awesome um, to have you do that. Uh, do you have any parting words before we 
uh, hit off? Uh, just learn to love contact, I think. <laughs> learn to love contact. That'd be a great snippet. Yeah. Awesome. I love yeah. that. So, uh, uh, Christy, like I said, thank you so much. It's just gold dust, um, what you're telling us here. And we're very lucky to have someone of, of your stature uh, with us and to be sharing your experiences. So again, thank you very much. And we'll see you all in week three of our Learn to Play Sevens uh, installment. Yeah. Thank Cheers. you. And then...